Are we all just playing here? What if all of this, everything in the universe, all this miraculous stuff that we can barely comprehend, but we, we sure try hard, but all this amazingness, that all seems to be pointing in one direction, science and spirituality and religion and experience and everything. What if it was just consciousness splitting itself into trillions and well, really splitting itself into infinite pieces and different pieces and a variety of pieces and playing with them and shuffling them around exploring itself in separateness separating itself to discover itself. Its own great set saying. Think of a kid in a sandbox by himself. And he's got his toys. And he's, he's got a variety of toys. He's got dolls and he's got things that make funny noises and he's got trucks and he's got airplanes and he's got superheroes and He's got uh, speak and spell, and he's got all kinds of variety of stuff, learning toys and fun toys and things to play games with. And he's in there creating stories, and he's, he's having a ball. But if you watch the kid, if you watch a kid play, they, can, they really get into the play. At some point, we, we do see that the, the voices start to come out, and they start to create characters for the for the truck or the the figures and what. He starts, and they start stories start to form, and, and ideas and concepts and dramas start to form, and we can see the the child will even start to feel. You know, they're taking those trucks and they're in the beach. They're actually feeling something. They're actually creating through those toys. And so the playing transforms and, and becomes almost a, an expression. A, 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 knowing we're not a, a, a vehicle of self discovery. And the child can get even wrapped up in the stories and in the characters it's creating. And so to me, that, that's what it feels like. That this could all just be where consciousness one. And so much points. There's so much I see that in everything in the world, all the the endless amounts of beliefs and ideas and concepts and scientific beliefs and religious beliefs and spiritual beliefs and ever changing and growing and uh, and yet so much of the messages are the same there's so much commonality I see more commonality than in all these things than I do see contradiction there are contradiction in flavors but if we focus on the commonality I think that's That's when we get closer to the truth. Although really, is there anything... Is there such a thing as truth other than... the experiencing of the expressions? We, we feel a truth from that. But other than the truth of just being in the now, of the feeling. Especially when we get up here. Is there really anything such, such thing as a truth? An absolute truth, I should say. I mean, we use these words as best we can to describe the indescribable. But I think it's good to seek truth. But if we start to label it and start to seek it too tightly, and thinking it's an actual thing, 
As long as we remember there really is no truth, only what feels true in the moment. And there's our biggest pointer. <laughs> is it really what always feels the most truthful to you? Felt the strongest in the moment? So what you felt so true six years ago, now what you feel true is something totally different. Both were powerful. Both felt felt like a truth, not just psychologically, but they, they felt something from it. And what were those, if not moments? So the truth, you know, I think we've heard it before, people say truth can only be found in the moment. I don't know if somebody said that, somebody must have. And it's fascinating. It's miraculous. And so, yeah, aren't we all just playing here? Aren't we all just pieces of the one playing itself out? Is there really any, any such thing as right and wrong? Do you want to stick to those limited beliefs? Now, it doesn't mean we can't play in that sandbox. Once we know we're just playing, who's to say we can't all, we, we can't start to play and the sandbox together and create some magical things. Endless possibilities, we could do that. But maybe if we just remember we're playing, if we can just accept that this is an expression that we're not going to figure out with this. If we can, we'll always seek but if we, as long as, if we can maybe get to the point where seeking isn't the end all be all, it's just a thing we do. If we can just accept it all and just flow with it. Just think what we could experience next. Discover about ourselves next. We're scr barely scratching the surface, I think that's clear. We're playing in the sandbox, but there is a purpose to it. We, if you look at nature, there's a purpose in everything. Mainly just to being whatever it is. Everything has its purpose, that's its purpose. To just be a tree is meant to be just a tree. And we see the lessons that, I mean, this, this planet ocean, this universe, this is not only a sandbox, but it's the ultimate laboratory. We've been given everything, including the ability to manifest. You know, law of attraction is still running pretty strong, and, and I think anybody that really opens up to what's going on around us and with us and within us, you can't deny that it exists. But is it the end at all and be all? Should, do, is that where the truth lies? Or is it just a tool to play with? A wonderful tool to realize that we're playing here, that there's a bigger purpose going on. And so we see we, we, we're, we're, we're here in this Eden with Planet Ocean. And almost all of what we consider suffering that we go through as humanity, as humans, is all self-made. It's not the planet there. The planet's in balance, completely always in balance, and it's still trying, always continuing to balance it out, even balance itself out with us. And uh, if, if our expression has to be our own demise, which I, I don't believe it is, and I, I, it's not what I want to create, but if it is, the planet will recover. <laughs> Everything, nothing ends, everything continues, everything is in motion, and it never stops. That is fundamentally a truth we can, we can, we can experience. Again, you know, what is truth, but there's really nothing to contradict that, and we feel it and experience it. So it's a lesson this place gives us, among endless lessons and resources, it gives us resources, it gives us 
beauty, it gives us inspiration, it gives us science. The science itself teaches us that scientists are digging deeper, they're finding the holographic universe, the, the God particle, uh, you know, pioneers that discover what happens with water and our energy patterns and what they do to water and, you know, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. But, it all seems to be pointing in one direction. At least that's how I perceive it. It's all pointing in to something grand. Something really we've been talking about since the beginning of religion, spirituality, the beginning of man. If you even look back at the original cave paintings, I mean the really the first cave paintings. There's one called the Cave of, that was recently discovered called the, uh, I think it's called the Cave of Dreams, there's a documentary on it. Unbelievable when you see the intention, when you see uh, what's, what's been, uh, what's been going on, what they, what they were expressing. As our best guess, I mean, that they've sent in teams of scientists very methodically not to disrupt anything. And uh, their window's short, I guess they're not going to be cut off from it soon. And they went in there with real respect and intention, and it's amazing even that in itself is an expression. And scientists from different ideologies and different uh, backgrounds, and each coming and cooperating, but and but looking from different angles to see what is this, to 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 try to get a glimpse, if we can, of what these amazing paintings that were very methodically created, and some people believe are the most beautiful artwork on earth. Uh, Amazing stuff. So even back then, it's always been going on. This whole thing is a spiritual journey, really. Because what is spirituality? It comes from the word spirit. So spirit, the divine spark, the energy, the, the source, the center of the hologram, whatever you want to call it. Everything seems to be pointing, even, even the science, everything seems to be pointing to a path to design and pattern. It's incredible. It's fantastical. And so, and we, we hear debates, people talking about, is this an illusion, spiritual circles, is this an illusion? Or, well, yes and no. <laughs> Spirituality and, as I said, modern science is showing us holographic universe that uh, essentially if you break it down, this is all illusion or, ho or hologram more accurately. When we use the word illusion, we have different beliefs behind it. So what you hear when you hear illusion might be different from what I hear. So hologram maybe if we put it that way, if we think of Star Trek and the holodeck. When they went in there, everything was real, and they had to turn off the sa they had to turn on safety so someone wouldn't get k killed. So essentially, the hologram, holodeck had the potential of being completely real, except for the fact that it wasn't. <clears throat> they even tested them consciousness, and we even played eventually, and then said, "Well, can something become conscious in there?" And something did. So they they took that as far as you can go. But there's a metaphor right there. But the hologram still feels very real to us, and anything we believe is real to us anyway, so by default, anything we, we perceive, how we perceive it is the reality. But when we break it down of what it is, yes, it's being projected to projection. It's being created, and it's clearly being affected by us. A ballet, a dance is happening. It's incredible. It can be frightening. <laughs> but again, if we can just accept, I think so many, no matter what we're talking about with spirituality or the meaning of the universe, again, doesn't it always come down to acceptance? The more we flow with life and what's already going on and accept, the easier we 
the less we suffer, the easier time we have to acclimate, the more we can learn. When we close ourselves off and say, no, this isn't happening, I don't like this. And we see very little, our hands are over, we're, we're, we're not seeing what's really taking place. We're getting bits and we're then we're making judgments on it and we're, it's going to affect that whole thing that will affect us later. But when we start to open up to it all and open up to ourselves, isn't that all we can really do? Flow with it, go with it. Come on, Ant. You get off of me. See if I can flick him off without hurting him. Whoop. No. Oop. There you go. We're all just playing here. That's not to undermine some of the, the things we see. We don't want to see others suffer. We don't, you know. It's not meant... When I say that, I certainly don't paint over the suffering of what they're going through. Of what people go through, we all go through. And the planet itself, and the, the creatures go through as as part of our expression, our creation that we're doing here. I'm just saying, and there's nothing wrong, I, I, many of us who believe this way, we still work towards creating something different. Why not? Create something more beautiful, create something more in line that feels more in line with, 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 you know, how we feel, or what we feel to be true. So we play, and we can play in any direction we want. We really can. We have all the resources, we have all the abilities and the powers. We and we barely don't even know what we have. We have everything. We and, and still we have barely comprehend what we have. We're so blessed. And I think if we can just, I mean, I think we all feel that. We, we hear it talked about that childlike spirit. Don't you always feel more and more in line with who you really are when you're just being childlike? Not childish, childlike. So if we can tap into the childlike nature as much as possible, if we can embrace what's going on around us, especially in nature, if we can keep going inward in stillness and, and embracing that self-love, that feeling we describe as love, but that feels home to us, feels like the source. If we can open up to all this and just learn to keep to keep reminding ourselves and to accept as much as possible as we're capable of in the moments. And to let things go. Acceptance. Being in the moment. You know, that message is resonated for since the beginning. So there's a reason for that. So have fun playing. You're in Eden. You are powerful. You could do anything you want. Anything. So have fun with it. Discover yourself if you can. Just flow with it. Just have fun. Happy playing.